Thank you very much. So, um, my name is Petter Björkvist. I'm the CEO of NovaHep. We are a Swedish biotech company located in Gothenburg. I would like to take the opportunity to thank ARM for giving me this opportunity to speak today. So, um, I'm afraid you have to... Uh, let's see, how does this one work? There we are, sorry about that. So, um, also I have this borrowing slide. Borrow, uh, borrowing slide. So, uh, NovaHep, we are uh, located in Gothenburg, Sweden, as I said. We are a spin-off from the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. We have a headquarter and operations in Gothenburg, that is the west coast of Sweden. We are a VC-owned uh, company. The current owners are from Sweden, Switzerland, and from Korea. And we are obviously commercializing a technology in regenerative medicine. And today I would like to take the opportunity to talk to you about how we can individualize blood vessels. So you have a slide here showing our vision and mission. So of course we are going to cure diseases. And about the technology, I have a couple of buzzwords here. I guess they are almost redundant in this meeting, but nevertheless, all these words are together collecting um, the essence of uh, what we are working with. That is, as you see at the end here, the and recellularization. So the trick here, um, if you have an organ, and if you take off all the cells from that particular organ, you will end up with something. And uh, interestingly, the organ looks pretty much the same after taking off all the cells. So behind the cells, you have an extracellular matrix, a scaffold, as we call it, the perfect um, environment for hosting new cells. So what we do after decellularization is that we are recellularizing our organ again. And why are we doing that? Yes, we are bringing an organ or a tissue from an allogeneic state into an autologous state. And I will talk to you mostly about blood vessels today. So this is simply how we do when we take away all the cells. First we flush the, the, the organ, then we are using detergents to lyse the cells that are covering the blood vessel. Then we also use enzymes to take off all the DNA, which is an important step for us. And we end up with, um, with an empty tube, being again the perfect start for the next step of our process. So the next step is to recellularize. And you may know that there are quite a few organizations and, and um, academic research going on using uh, D and recellularization, but what makes us unique is that we're using peripheral blood for our process. So we are uh, perfusing one blood vessel with only 25 milliliters of peripheral blood from the patient. The, the cells in this um, blood sample is enough to, in one week, um, remodel the organ, and we have an organ that is ready to be transplanted to the patient. So this is unique to us. We are using peripheral blood. We have a very lean and quick process, and um, this process is, of course, covered by IP, as is summarized in this slide. And um, about the reality of all this now. So in Gothenburg, Sweden, we'd start in 2011, three patients, being three kids, were transplanted with uh, D and recellularized blood vessels. The, the three kids, they had a, a disease called portal vein obstruct, uh, obstruction, making the livers failing. So they were all three on waiting list for a liver transplant. And as you may imagine, to transplant a liver to a child is a very tricky process. And it's also very costly because the, the, the child needs to live the rest of his or her life without an immune system. Instead, uh, Professor Michael Olauson, who is one of the leading uh, liver surgeons in Sweden, 
he understood that it was not really a problem with the liver, it was the portal vein supplying the liver with blood that was the problem. So he suggested to, in a compassionate use study, D and recellularize three portal veins with the kids' own stem cells in order to, to um, have a solution to the problem. And as you will see here, uh, the follow-up was that within days, two weeks, the, the livers opened up and uh, there was no sign following up on this for immune reactions, etc. So all this is published data. However, as a company, we looked at this um, rather orphan disease, um, portal vein obstruction, and we understood that we need uh, something else. So we looked into a variety of applications, and our eyes um, uh, was caught by chronic venous insufficiency, a disease where the deep veins in the upper parts of the legs are failing, and importantly, these veins are carrying valves, opening and closing, and uh, regulating the blood flow to the legs. And as you can see, these patients are gradually developing uh, symptoms, starting with uh, pain and swelling of the legs, but uh, at the end, rather nasty uh, leg ulcers will be the result. So we decided to start a program here. And uh, why is chronic venous in insufficiency um, such an important disease for us? Only in the EU and, and US, there is 2.2 million patients annually with this disease. Uh, there is no competition. There is no treatment for these patients today. And um, uh, patients are uh, diagnosed and sent home with surgical stockings, ointments, etc. But there is no real cure. So um, patients receiving this are very often, at least in our part of the world, sent home uh, on sick leave or uh, early uh, sick pension, and thereby they are an enormous burden to the society. So altogether, this is a virgin market. Uh, sorry about the Swedish crowns here, but it's a big market only with the worst uh, cases with chronic venous insufficiency. So we decided to start a program here, and we are now develop, developing together with surgeons in Oslo in Norway, um, a program ending up with a clinical trial uh, in this area. So what you see here is our um, clinical trial um, or development program. The blue arrows here, they are the CVI field. We are also planning for going into the art artery area with this product. And we, of course, are planning to generate uh, safety data and efficacy data and gradually expanding from a local uh, approval in Scandinavia to other areas. Importantly, we are a company that are raising funds. So we are looking at um, the, the, the company uh, plan or map here. The blue arrow here is the current clinical trial program that will start in um, early 2017, so in just a couple of months in Norway, we have a first um, clinical trial being a phase one, phase two study starting. Um, and um, we will continue with the subsequent uh, clinical trials and also go into to the arterial side. So what we are looking to fund now is uh, the blue part here. And as you can see, we are just about to bring in um, a smaller capital increase that will be covered, at least as it looks now, by, by the current owners. But importantly, we are going to make a little bit, at least with the Swedish standard, bigger capital increase in, in mid next year. So US dollar six million is what we are planning to bring in. And that will take us through the first clinical trial program of. Uh, uh, on chronic venous insufficiency, and also to start a whole a bunch of activities on the arterial side. So I would like to summarize the opportunities here. We are just about to start this clinical trial program. 
We are starting it in Oslo in Norway, and there is a simple reason for that. We have worked now together with uh, experts on this particular disease now for three years. And in Norway, the patients uh, having chronic venous insufficiency are organized in a national center, so all Norwegian patients are collected in this center. Um, so CVI, chronic venous insufficiency, will be our um, first target indication. And as I said, it's a, it, it is an uncured disease with a great medical need. So next, we will have um, um, a lot of different uh, business opportunities, a lot of indications. So we are discussing and having early animal studies on some other um, indications for the sake of time. I, I have not time to go into all that now, but I'm happy to discuss that with you. So we are raising funds now to show first clinical safety data and enabling the next wave of clinical data in this area. We are also going to market this product, of course, as quick as possible, and we are in dialogue with the local um, authorities. Let's call them the Swedish and Norwegian um, FDA and uh, they are rather clear about that if we can show this uncured disease with, um, with good clinical data, we may be able to, to go rather early for something in Norway and Sweden called named patients, so we can start to um, digest the market on that side. So, of course, the ambition from NovaHep is to help patients in this area, to improve quality of lives, li life, but we're also um, uh, confident that we will become a leader in this area of personalized regenerative medicine. So we have follow-up programs on the nerves and skin, for example, Some, something that I'm also happy to discuss with you after this presentation. So uh, again, um, I'm here now for two days and I'm happy to discuss Thank you for listening. I think we have two minutes for questions. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Yes. Can you say more about the type of cells that are featured on the CD journal? Is there a variety of cells? And are there any indications of any questions? Yes. So, uh, to start to answer that, we are using uh, cells in the in peripheral blood. So we know uh, quite a bit about uh, what's going on, but of course, using whole blood uh, instead of isolated uh, purified cells is also um, a little bit of, of um, a black box approach on that side. So more than that, I can't say today, but. Uh, what we are studying is, of course, uh, how the, our blood vessels are, are uh, reseeded with cells and how that is uh, preventing the vessels from, from the major uh, problem as we see it being uh, thrombotic events uh, after uh, transplantation. You had a second question. Let's see what that is. Yes. So, so if your question is if we are, have tried to, to isolate the cells or, uh, and use uh, purified cells instead, was that your question? No. No. That, that's an interesting question and we have discussed that, but no, we are not pre-treating pre pre the, the patients at all. 30 seconds, thank you.